bit complicated, yes, but it's not too hard. Today we are learning all about DMX, how to program your lights. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. So when it comes to DMX, there are two main things where people mess up. If you f*** one of these two up, you are screwed. Nothing is going to work. So the first thing we have to address are DMX addresses and DMX channel mode. These two work hand in hand with one another. So it's very important that we get these right. DMX address will essentially tell whatever DMX controller you are using what fixture you want to control. Now tied to that is actually channel mode. This lets the software know how much of the light you actually want to control. And I actually kind of hate that they title this channel mode because it's more or less command. You see, DMX works with faders. So you have a fader here, fader here, fader here. And if you've ever seen an analog DMX controller, you guys know what the faders are. There's a bunch of faders and they all do different things. That's essentially how many of those faders you want to use with each light. Now, whoever invented DMX really did an awful job. So these faders have a value from zero all the way to 255. Now, this is my virtual faders right here. And when you lift these up and down, you are telling the light to do different things. Now, most lights come with many different channel modes. Most of them will come with either, I would say, between one and as far as five channel modes. Take, for example, something like this. This is a parkan. This is what we're going to be programming today. It's the easiest way to learn DMX. Start with a parkan. This is a hex parkan, which means that all the these LEDs here can produce six different colors. They can each do red, green, blue, UV, white, and amber. So when I set the channel mode, the light is going to ask me, how many faders do you want to use with this light? Do you just want to use six in order to control each individual colors? Do you want to do more so you can control the strobe, so you can control how bright the light is? So essentially, you are telling the light how many faders you want to use with it. Each light requires a different amount of faders, which will ultimately determine what can controller you can and cannot use with it. This is why many people have bailed on the traditional analog controller because those are very limited. If you have a controller that can only do three channels, you are essentially beat. You wouldn't be able to control something like this because this needs way more channels to operate in. Now going back to what I was saying, whoever made DMX is really stupid because I really wish that they just would have made this 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0 to 100. And I'll explain why. Now, the second problem that people run into is they get this. They set their DMX address, they set their proper channel mode on their light, and then they start messing with the faders and they notice that nothing is happening. There are two very important faders that you need to look out for, and those are your dimmer and your strobe otherwise known as your shutter. First thing that you absolutely have to do when programming your lights is you absolutely have to identify which one is your dimmer and which one is your shutter or strobe. Dimmer is pretty easy to understand. Zero to 255 is no brightness and this is fully bright. Now strobe is a little bit more tricky because remember, like I mentioned, they set values from zero to 255, which means that all the numbers in between here do different things. Generally for strobes you're gonna have one of two things. It'll be generally off in the middle. You'll usually have your pulse slash strobe. So this is very important because depending on where you put the fader, that's going to determine whether your light is either pulsing or full blown strobing. And it's usually somewhere in the middle, but again, every light is different. All the way up type is just on. When most people start programming their light, the first thing that they do is they identify their dimmer, their strobe all the way up and all the way up. Think of your shutter as an eye. So essentially when you have your shutter on, the eye is open. When you have your shutter off, the eye is closed. And when you have it strobing, the eye is going like this, which means that the light is only coming through when the shutter is open. 
So imagine we're controlling something like a Parkan here. This is a little bit more of a dumbed down Parkan because uh, this one has way more colors than the one that I'm programming right now. But most Parkans work like this. You have to check the manual because you gotta figure out what each fader is gonna do. Now, if you're not using a traditional analog controller and you're using a software-based system, then it's a lot easier because most of those systems, if you're using something like a Chave, an ADJ Lite, something like that is always going to be found within their system. So they'll automatically tell you what each fader does but that's not going to be the case for every single light manufacturer it just depends on what software you are using and how many patches for different lights they have but even if they don't have a patch you can still control it all you have to do is take a look at the manual that came with your light and identify what each fader does so oftentimes i get the question oh does that adj controller work for my chave lights and the answer is always yes as long as your lights have an in and an out for DMX, you can use any software with them. It doesn't matter if they're from China, it doesn't matter if they're from Japan, it doesn't matter if they're from Germany, it doesn't matter if they're from Nicaragua, Mexico, USA, whatever it may be, as long as they have these two, you can use any software to control them. Now, identifying what each fader does, that will depend on the software that you are using and the light that you are using. So let's go back and program a light. Now, a common mistake that people make is that they lift this fader and then they're like, why isn't the light turning red? It's not turning red because you didn't enable the dimmer or the strobe. Like I said, you have to open up the eye. The strobe is like the eye, so we wanna have that fully open and you have to enable the dimmer. So how bright do you want it? So if you lift the strobe all the way up and you start raising this dimmer, you'll notice that the light will slowly start turning on until you have it at full brightness. Now, if I just want my light to turn red, I'm gonna bring my dimmer all the way up, strobe all the way up, and I'm gonna bring my red fader all the way up. And now my light, and now my light will fully be on red. Now, if I wanna make that strobe, all I have to do is bring my fader somewhere in the middle because like I mentioned, the strobes are usually somewhere right here in the middle. Of course, my fader blew away, but <laughs> you guys get it. And and that's really and that's really and that's really the fundamentals and that's really the fundamentals of DMX. For the purposes of this video, I am going to be using my DMX controller of choice, which is ADJ's Airstream DMX. Everybody always asks the question, "Oh, do I need to buy a hundred of these because I got a hundred of these lights?" No, you don't need to buy a hundred of these. We're gonna come out of here with a cable. And we're gonna go into this light. If I wanna control additional lights, I'm just gonna have to come out of this light and go into that light. However, do keep in mind that controllers do have limits on how many addresses you can take up. Like I mentioned, the manual pretty much tells you what every fader does. This particular fixture has four DMX channel modes, and you guys can see them here. It's got one with six channels, it's got one with seven channels, one with eight, and one with 12 channels. And it tells you what every single channel will do. So this is why it's very important to actually take a look at your manual. If we move on to eight channels, it'll add that strobing or shutter feature that I mentioned. This actually tells you what each value does. So if you move that fader to around 31, the LED will still be off. Now, once you go past 31 and get to 32, the LED will turn on. In the 60s, you enter strobing followed by just full on. Then you have some strobing and some random strobes. And as you guys can see, in the middle there, there are some full on. So depending on what you want your light to do, this is where you need to be in. All right, so let me whip out my iPad so that we can start programming our light. The way you patch your lights will depend based on what software you're using or if you're using an analog controller, you'll just have to skip this part. Essentially what you do is just go right to the part where you assign how many channels you wanna use it with. So first thing we do here is we hit our settings here, go into patching. This is a brand new profile so I don't have anything patched yet. I'm gonna search 5P hex here at the top because that's the name of our light. It's a 5P hex, 5P. And there you guys see it. Like I mentioned, it has four different channel modes. For the purposes of this video and keeping on that same theme, we're gonna go ahead and use that eight channel mode that gives us dimmer, strobe, and a color selection tool. I'm gonna only patch one light 
because I also want to show you guys how addressing works. Now I'm going to work my way back and as you guys can see since this is the first fixture that we patched in it gave me the address of DMX address 1. I do want to show you something um, just going off the address thing. If I patch in another light this time I'm going to patch a 12 channel fixture in back. Now remember our original fixture this one that we're going to patch here took up 8 channels and the channels are essentially those faders that I talked to you guys about about earlier because I started on DMX address one and we took up eight channels one two three four five six seven eight our next available channel for our next fixture is going to be channel nine now if you notice with that second fixture that I patched in it's just a dummy fixture I don't actually have a second fixture but with that second fixture it took up 12 channels which means that I have to add 12 to that 9 and that'll take me uh where would that take me i believe 21 so if i were to patch another light in and this time i'm only gonna want a six channel one and i patch that in and back there you guys see it starts at dmx address 21 so that's a little bit about how addressing works now i'm gonna go ahead and delete those because i don't actually have those fixtures we're just working with one for right now so what i want to do now is i want to apply these settings to our actual fixture the way we unlock our fixture is we hold Hold down the mode button and we toggle through till we get to DMX. So here I am in DMX. This light is a little bit weird. It should be a D there, but you guys get it. And I'm going to press enter. It's going to ask me how many channels I want. Eight is what I input in my software. So I'm going to press enter on that and make sure that my address is correct. So lights can be set anywhere between one and 512 that is known as a universe a full universe is 512 keep in mind that that's how many faders you have available not how many lights you can actually control however you can put the same light on the same channel so if i have a bunch of these 5p hexes i can put them all on dmx address one and they'll all do the same thing so now we have that all set we are ready to go let me flip this over and we'll start programming so i'm gonna toggle back to my fixtures i'm gonna select my fixture and as you guys can see the cool thing about using software is that it tells you what every fader does now if you patched in a generic fixture that wasn't in the dmx software all you had to do is essentially is tell it how many channels you want to use with it and these will all be blank so you'll have to turn to the instruction manual to actually figure out what every channel does when you're using software though you can relabel them to tailor it to each light and it's pretty easy to do that so like i mentioned the first thing we want to do is we want to get our strobe all the way up the strobe is our eye make sure it's fully open and we want to get our dimmer all the way up as well now this is totally going to blow out the image here on my camera which means i might have to bring it back down in a little bit i'm going to go ahead and bring up the red um i'm actually going to bring down the dimmer i lied because it's totally going to blow out my image i'm going to bring it just so that you guys can see it when you're using software you can really dial the numbers in because they have this plus and minus when you're using analogs it's a lot harder because essentially you just have to figure out kind of where you are it does not denote the number now when people get into DMX there's usually only one thing that they're really wanting to do and that is essentially create a strobe if we take a look at our manual you guys can see that from 64 to 95 we have strobing slow and fast so at 95 the strobe is going to be at its highest and at 64 the strobe is going to be at its lowest so because I can see the values here I can kind of work my way all the way down to 64 and you guys can see there that the light is strobing it's a slow pulsing strobe however but if I really want to get crazy the camera is going to freak out a little bit so just bear with me all I have to do is raise it till around the 90s and there you guys can see that the strobe is a lot more crazy. Now most strobes are white and in order to achieve that white you have to color mix. So in order to color mix we're going to get all our faders all the way up. So there you guys see I have a white strobe and it's totally messing with my camera so let me dim it just a little bit. Now your light may not have all these colors. This light actually has a built-in white. If you don't have a built-in white all you have to do to get white is just raise all the colors all the way up. My light does have a built-in white so if I shut all these off you guys can see that it is a nice cool white. Another advantage of DMX is being able to color mix. Color mix is essentially turning on multiple colors to achieve different colors. So if I tap on my red here, I bring that up, 
I'm gonna turn off this strobe because I don't want it strobing anymore. I can add something like a blue and that'll give me a purple. So there you guys see I have a purple. And if I want some pastels, I activate my UV. So if I bring my UV up, you guys can see that I can create a nice pastel color. Now lastly, when you're doing this, you're gonna wanna save. Let's save our red. We'll save it into our scene and we'll just title this red. Done. Now if I go into my scenes and I toggle that off, and toggle it on, I have red, 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 red. Now, if you wanna be able to trigger a strobe at any time, arrange my strobe, I'm gonna put it in around 90, and save that, we'll put it on scene two, and I'm gonna label that strobe. Done, and save. Okay, so I've created two scenes now. Let's say we're all just chilling, nice little love scene happening around the room, imagine that. And now we switch it up to EDM, a big drop is coming, and we turn on the strobe. So there you guys can see, I can toggle between our red and our strobe. <laughs> And that, my friends, is essentially the fundamentals of DMX. It's a little bit complicated, yes, but it's not too hard once you get the hang of it. Best thing to do if you want to get good at programming lights is essentially just start out with a simple parkant like I just did in this video. And always remember that there are five key things to always keep in mind when you're doing lighting programming. DMX address, channel mode, dimmer, strobe, and lastly, check that manual so that you know what every fader does. Thank you bro so much for watching this video. I do hope you found it informative. I tried to dumb down DMX to its bare essentials. If you have any additional questions regarding DMX, don't hesitate to ask if there are any other videos that you'd like me to make regarding DMX. Also, don't hesitate to ask down in those comments below. I'll be down there answering any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have. And if you like this video and you'd like to support my channel so that I can keep making more more videos just like this one to help you out please like this video if you like this subscribe if you're new around here and if you really want to help me out don't forget to turn on that bell so you can be notified next time we do another lighting DMX tutorial I'm thinking about doing a moving head tutorial next what do you guys think but all right bros I'll catch you guys in my next one peace